unparsable resource locators. Uh, no. Uh, uniform resource locators. You probably heard about them because they're pretty popular on this uh, cat delivery network that we use daily basis. They've been uh, around for quite some time, uh, defined on a bunch of RFCs, probably a number of them that I missed. And they looked something like that, if you're unlucky. Uh, have a username pass part that's optional, and host name and paths, and some extra parameters and stuff, and fragments. So. They're used to locate stuff and also sometimes to identify stuff, even though that's something that you should actually use URLs for, but whatever. Uh, so you might wonder which characters are actually allowed in these URLs. Well, there are some reserved characters. Uh, you might be a bit surprised by the last of them, because I don't really know why they're reserved, but still, they are reserved. And then you have unreserved characters. This is as specified by the RFCs. These characters are not reserved, so that you don't ever have to encode them. And you also actually have unwise characters, which is also defined by the uh, RFCs. Uh, and they're, I guess, just stupid. Uh, some of them should be encoded. Uh, all of them may be encoded by percent encoding, of course. Uh, of course, space can also be encoded as a plus because of, you know, craziness. So how come that I want to talk about this? Uh, wh what makes them interesting? Well, of course, you have the typical phishing scenario. Uh, you send a link to some stupid per person that uh, looks at the link, thinks it goes to PayPal, and clicks it, whilst that actually user ends up at some phishing site somewhere. But that's just boring. Uh, you can also, of course, use them to check the refer to try and stop uh, cross-site request forgery attacks, but that's just stupid. So. You can also, of course, uh, uh, end up in open redirect situations where you click a link at a trusted site, but you end up on a malicious site. Uh, but that's just like phishing, which is boring. Or it's interesting if you use that together with other exploits, but then, of course, that's the ones that you fix instead, so that's just stupid. Of course, you have sometimes you find open forwards and server-side request forgery uh, vectors, which are really cool, but they're not quite common. Uh, so I'm going to focus on talking about uh, single sign-on systems. Or, well, at least that's the example that I'm going to give. So if you have a typical single sign-on flow, you have a user, and the user goes to some site that it wants to authenticate to, and that site says, well, I don't know you. Uh, go to your single sign-on partner and bring a ticket back, and then maybe I'll let you in. So the user goes to the single sign-on partner, and the single sign-on partner says, well, I see that you want to visit that site up there. Well, that's the one of the sites that I trust uh, and authenticate for, so here's a ticket, and go bring that to the site, and uh, the site says, okay, that's you, uh, that's okay. So, in technical terms, the user goes to some random URL, uh, some URL at that, that particular site. Uh, the site says, well, you don't need to authenticate, so the site redirects the user to the single sign-on. The single sign-on uh, takes a look at this URL, saying like, okay, so I'm going to look at that redirect URL param parameter, because that's the one that I'm actually authenticating you for. Uh, and if the single sign-on likes this URL, then the single sign-on partner creates a ticket, uh, appends this to the URL, and sends the user on its way. Uh, you know, there's a URL in that URL, and if you, <laughs> if you really like redirecting, that's uh, what you're going to do. Uh, so the point of attack is uh, you have a server interpreting this URL, uh, and if the server that interprets this URL is pointing to one site, whilst the user browser is interpreting this URL as pointing to another site, then the browser uh, will uh, send the ticket to the wrong site. So it looks something like this. Now the user is over there and having a good time. The attacker sits here and sends uh, some request in a you know, cross-site request for your manner uh, to the user's browser. The user's browser gets tricked, so the user's browser goes to the single sign-on saying, yeah, I want to go to some really fishy, crazy URL. Uh, and if the single sign-on uh, partner says, the, well, with this URL, it probably points to that site up there. So, OK, I'm going to get you a ticket. So sends back the URL with a ticket to the browser. The browser says, all right, so I'm going to go to this particular host. Well, that probably points down to that guy. So I'm sending this ticket there. And then the, this guy down here takes the ticket and impersonates the user on the site. Not too strange. Uh, but now, how can this be achieved? Well, classic mistakes when you try to validate URLs, uh, like the kids do. Uh, that's like, see if the URL starts with my site. Well, of course, that's stupid, because then you just depend some crazy stuff on the site, and then you point, point to some other crazy domain. Or you just put a uh, at sign, and then you know, the site name gets interpreted as a username on the URL instead. Uh, of course, checking out if whether the uh, URL starts with a slash, uh, and thinking that uh, this might be a relative URL. Uh, 
that's uh, not so good, of course, because it might be a relative URL, but it might be a protocol relative URL, meaning that I actually points to another site anyway. And another mm, way of validating them is that you try to figure where is the first slash, the post path separator, and then you try to parse everything up until that slash and see, does this end with my domain? Well, of course, Microsoft screwed that up because uh, you can use backslashes now, so uh, that way won't work either. So what do you do if you want to validate URLs? Well, of course, you go and have a look at your URL parser of your framework or fr framework of choice. Uh, you know, java.url and Python's URL parser, of course, and, and uh, I mean, it'll parse out all the parts that you need. You get the host, you get the protocol, you get the paths, refer, uh, yeah, pretty much anything. And you know, if they break down for some reason and start like, doing incorrect validation, then at least you should be able to read about it like in the security news somewhere. This is at least what I used to tell people, but uh, no, that's completely not the case because all of the URL parsers are completely broken, and of course, so are all the browsers. But you know, I don't need to tell you about that. Uh, so, <laughs> the URL quiz show. Uh, let's see. We have the contestants. Uh, Java is bringing in with the Java.NET URL class from Python. From PHP, we have the parse URL uh, method, and uh, .NET is uh, coming in with the system.uri. We have the .NET's little brother, the open source version, Mono, uh, which is also, of course, using the same class. Python is using URL parse, uh, and Node.js uh, is also uh, part of this because, uh, you know, it's funny with Java on the server side, uh, JavaScript. Uh, I'm sorry about Ruby and Perl because you didn't cut it this time. And the judges, of course. Uh, the honorable judges needs no introduction. So let's go to the first question. To which host does the following URL point? What? At the at, so uh, well, some one or the other of these two at signs are going to get interpreted as the credential separators, and uh, seems like well, the guys to the right uh, they're voting for the last one, and, and Java is going for the first one, and well, the .NET brothers are saying that's an invalid URL, which is of course yeah the reasonable thing to say. Uh, the judges will say, well, that goes to that last site, but of course I'm going to give you a warning because it's really dangerous with credentials and URLs, so you're going to have like, a little uh, extra warning there. Uh, of course, uh, Chrome will say, yeah, that's the site, uh, go there. Uh, Explorer says, no, I don't do that anymore because I quit uh, doing credentials and URLs of, as of IE6 or something. Of course, Firefox will actually, before it sends you the warning, send the request to the actual URL, so that warning won't help you uh, at all because your credentials will be already begun. Uh, but enough about that. Let's go to the next question. Data URI is a fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, uh, subject. Uh, of course, to which host does the following URL point? Well, if you know anything about data URLs, you know that they actually don't go to any host at all because that's like all the data that you have there. Um, and this particular case, that's the ACAR test file, you know, to try antiviruses. But so to which host does this point? Well, Java would say this is an unknown protocol because it's uh, not a, like, HTTP. Uh, the rest of them are actually pretty, pretty uh, in line with each other, so they're all saying this goes to the trusted.cld host, the, the trustable and nice host. So what would the browsers do? Well, Firefox is going to say, you probably want to save this, so I'm going to give you a save box. Uh, Chrome will just say, yeah, yeah, I already saved it, so it's already on your disk. Uh, Explorer will say, I'm sorry, but I'm still living in the 80s where we don't have the data you rise. I don't really understand that. Well, as a bonus, uh, uh, actually, this disappeared, but uh, PHP will actually parse that and execute it if it contains uh, PHP code. Uh, so thanks to, thanks to Friedrich at Detect Detectify, wherever you are, for pointing this out. Uh, and uh, well, that's also a hint uh, to something. Uh, <coughs> so next question, backslashes. Who wins? Uh, you have the slashes, backslash, at bashes. To which ho host does this URL point? Which gets to be the host? Well, uh, Java is obviously going for bashes. Uh, well, everyone's going for bashes, uh, except for the .NET brothers, which are uh, thinking that, no, that's not a valid host name. Uh, this is interesting, because the open source version is actually parsing this differently than the uh, proprietary version. Uh, but uh, they're pretty con convinced that this is actually goes to bashes, and I think that you already know the answer to this one, but the judges will say, of course, well, <laughs> Firefox will say bashes, surely. 
that you know the other guys just slashes because uh, they really like backslashes in the URLs. <coughs> and of course, <laughs> Explorer doesn't do uh, credentials in URLs either. So, next question, <laughs> and this is a tricky one: Which one is stronger, the hash sign or the at sign? Which wins? I'm the host or no, I am. Well, either I'm the host gets parsed as the host and the rest of this fragment, or no, I am gets parsed as the host and the first part as credentials. Well, actually, Java goes for no, I am, and so does PHP. Uh, the rest of them goes for the first one. Uh, interesting part, though, about PHP, because if you skip the last slash in that URL, it'll actually parse like the other guys. Uh, so you can actually manipulate that by appending the slash or uh, leaving it out. Uh, kind of crazy though, but uh, you know, uh, no, no differ difference in the browsers because the browsers all agree. So <coughs> now we get to some really strange stuff. I mean, what about spaces in URLs? Uh, obviously, surely they cannot allow spaces inside URLs. Uh, well, actually, actually they do allow it. Actually, the host names that they, these guys parse out is actually now containing white spaces, which is kind of strange because you know. DNS wouldn't allow you to use white spaces. Uh, Node.js, of course, uh, decides to stop parsing as soon as it finds an unexpected character, saying that, well, I'm just going to go for host name is what, and the rest of it is probably part of the path, which is, of course, a really bad idea. Uh, .NET and .Mono, let's say, invalid host, which is nice. Well, the browsers uh, will, will actually, all of them will actually encode that white space to a URL encoded white space. Uh, and the funny thing is actually Chrome manages to somehow resolve that, even though obviously you cannot use present signs in DNS because it's completely legal. But that does not stop uh, Chrome from actually using it and, uh, of course, um, getting a response. So, <laughs> of course, you can, you can maybe accept white spaces, but surely you will not accept line breaks in the middle of host names. That, I mean, is just crazy talk. But not according to these guys. So Java is going for Acceptable, I'm going to use a uh, line break in the host name. Uh, so, so does a PHP actually switches the line break and transforms it into an underscore so that you have no idea where you're ending up, actually. Uh, of course, Node again sees something that is strange, so just stops parsing and figuring, yeah, that's probably just you know, the first part. And again, the .NET brothers are uh, actually pretty strict here. Uh, and all the browsers just strip the uh, line breaks, of course, and just appends it together because line breaks should not have any meaning in, in their world. So that's uh, at least they're consistent, but uh, none of the frameworks parse it the same way. So, uh, well, in the end, you know, everyone loses, uh, well, at least in my OS and the browsers that I tested. But I want to bring out some special awards. Uh, the separ award, separator award goes to Node.js for pretty much allowing any character as a host name path separator. Uh, pretty much any character, actually, that's not part of the reserved or, or allowed set. Ambuid award goes to PHP for, uh, well, completely parsing URLs differently depending on whether you have a trailing slash or not. Uh, IPv6 award goes to Python's magical uh, parser for unknown reasons, if you have like hard brackets inside your host name, uh, Python will just like screw, uh, screw everything and use that thing that's in between the brackets as a host name and just forget about everything else, which is probably something uh, to do with the uh, IPv6 and a failed attempt of at parsing it, uh, which also contains a number of bugs, so you know, don't use it. And the DNS development award, of course, goes to Chrome for trying to extend the DNS protocol with some new funky char characters, which is, of course, uh, lovely. So, uh, some conclusions. If you can't configure your DNS to actually uh, respond to these crazy questions, well, then just configure it to use a wildcard domain, uh, in which case it will just respond to them anyway. Uh, and I have a little, very little time, so uh, I cannot tell you about all the other craziness that's going on here, but you know, just get into relative URL resolution or, or try to do some puny code conversion, which is also really hilarious. So you know, I should have submitted a full-length talk, but uh, in conclusion, uh, URL parsers cannot be uh, trusted to validate URLs, and if you need to accept a URL from a user, you, know, you need to break it apart to tiny, tiny parts, validate one all of these parts individually to make sure that they don't can contain stuff like line breaks and white spaces and crazy stuff like that. So, of course, I'm going to leave you uh, uh, some closing remarks. If you want to use a regular expression to uh, validate your URLs, 
uh, I went to the first hit on Stack Exchange and I googled it. Uh, so here's your regex. Uh, try to um, try to use it. And uh, thank you very much for listening. Thanks.